Well, good morning. We're on lesson 87. We're going to find the value of unknown variables or factors, okay? And it's really nothing new. We're just going to review some factors that we've worked with before and find a new technique. Recall that multiplication undoes division and addition undoes subtraction and vice versa. Division undoes multiplication and subtraction undoes addition. Let's take an example here. Let's say you have 3 times 10 and that gets 30. Well, that's multiplication. Well, if we divided by 10, we'd get 3. And if we divided by 3, we'd get 10. And there's our two factors that we started with. Now, the same would work with addition and subtraction. I, I use 63 and 18, and that gets you 81. And if you subtract 18, you get 63. And if you take 81 and subtract 63, you get 18, and there's our two factors that we started with. So there's nothing new. So let's put this to use, as we said in our chapter announcement, okay? Let's solve this one. 18x is equal to 120. Now what undoes multiplication? Division. And since I have an equal sign, I have to do the same thing to both sides, don't I? Now these will always cancel if you do it right, and x is going to be equal to 120 over 18. Now, both of those are divisible by 3 by the rules of division because 2 plus 1 is 3 and 8 plus 1 is 9. They're both divisible by 3. But if you look carefully, 6 will go into 12 and 6 will go into 18. So if I divided them both by 6, I'd get 20 over 3. Now, since some books refer to that as an improper fraction, I don't. I call it an algebraic fraction, remember? So I'm going to tell you to write your answer as x is equal to 20 over 3 or x is equal to 3 into 20 goes 6, 18, and look, 2 thirds left over. So x is equal to 20 thirds or 6 and 2 thirds. I would accept either one of those. I like these as I told you before because we're getting ready for pre-algebra and algebra. And it's hard to work with 6 and 2 thirds x as opposed to 20x divided by 3. All right, let's try another one here. It works the same with decimals or fractions as it does with whole numbers. Let's try this one. 2.1x is equal to 0 0.21. 21, okay? Should we first eliminate the decimal? Well, I don't know. Let's try it this way. If we move the decimal over here, I'd have to make that a zero. And if I moved it over here, I would have 210x is equal to 21, right? Opposite of multiplication is division. So x is equal to 21 over 210. That's pretty easy. That's 1 tenth, isn't it? 10 times 21 is 210. But remember, we started with a decimal. So we're going to have to say x is equal to 0 0.1 because that's what we started with. You don't have to, but whenever you're dealing with fractions, leave your answer in fractions unless told otherwise. All right, last one. I'll call this one the challenge. We're going to put a couple things together. You won't find it difficult, but you're going to have to pay attention. 4.2 is equal to 4x minus 2.2. Now, because I have both decimals and non-decimals, I'm going to leave the decimals until I find a place where I have to change it, and then I will. What's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. So I have to add 2.2 to this side. These will cancel, of course, and I'm going to get 6.4 is equal to 4x. Now I'm going to rewrite that without changing it. 4x is equal to 6.4 because I always work left to right. You don't have to. Now if I divide both sides by 4, I'm going to get x is equal to 6.4 
divided by 4. Now, I automatically see that that reduces to 3.2 divided by 2. And if I divided 2 into 3.2, I would get 1.6. So x is equal to 1.6, and we started with a decimal, we ended with a decimal. They're not difficult. You might have done this in your head. You might have done this in your head, but I would recommend you go ahead and put it on paper. It doesn't hurt. If nothing else, you remember where your decimal goes, okay? That's it. We'll see you tomorrow.